friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with Zook Stitch, and today is Saturday, August 5th, 2023. Welcome to my channel about craft stitch. I'm so glad that you are here spending part of your day or your evening with me. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope it isn't too hot or too cold where you are. We've been, we're probably one of the only areas in the country, I think I said this last week, that is like, we're okay. <laughs> We are right about average, maybe slightly above by a couple of degrees, but like this is why I moved to Portland for the summers in like mid 80s. That's about it. So um, I'm sorry <laughs> to everybody who's really struggling with heat and floods. And I mean, it's just been a wild summer, but for whatever reason, knock on wood, we have been very lucky. I have my iced coffee though. Um, this cute little glass so I look like all the cute TikTokers. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's very cloudy today. It feels like it's going to rain. It's not expected to rain. Uh, we don't get rain in the, in, the, in the summer is our dry season. So we haven't had any measurable rain in, I don't know, something like 45 days or something. So I don't think it's supposed to rain, but it's very overcast and it's kind of humid for, for us. Uh, so um, it's the lighting will be interesting today is basically what I'm getting at. Um, I did get my new desk. You are on my new desk. I know you might not be able to see any difference. I can see a big difference. I'm going to try to shake you like you don't shake. Um, it's way better than a card table. It was just delivered Thursday afternoon. Um, so it's still brand new to me and I love it. I'm so excited to have a, a good solid desk with space to spread out instead of a card table that I've been sitting on for I don't know, a couple years. So, and, oh, you can't see it. I have a new chair I'm sitting on, but you can't see it. It's not a uh, card table chair. So that's exciting. Um, I did have day two of the garage shell last weekend. I was just texting with my friend um, that we did the garage shell. And everything went well. Um, the things I didn't sell, I, we, I, I was happy overall. I was very happy overall. Um, I think I brought in a total of like $140 between the two days. So I'm very happy with that. The things that didn't sell that I was kind of surprised about were um, table lamps. Um, I have these table lamps. One of them actually broke. Um at the garage sale. So that one will not be sold. That one was thrown out, but, um, I'm very surprised at the table because I have them at $10 a piece. They work fine. Um, so I'm kind of surprised they are kind of specific style, but one is like a gold mercury base and the other is like a mother of pearl base. So I realize they're a pretty specific style, but I'm just surprised they didn't sell. So I had to bring those home. Um, but a lot of the other stuff sold and, um, you know, we were, we did well overall. My friend was happy also with how she did. We're already planning for next year. Um, and so we liked the time we did like eight to one Friday and Saturday. And that was, that was enough. We actually stayed open a little bit after one because people were coming and shopping and buying. So we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll make a buck. Um, so yes, it was good. So thank you all for your encouragement on the garage sale. They are a lot of work. Um, but this one was good because it's her neighborhood. They do a big neighborhood. So there were lots of, we got lots of traffic. Um, and it helped, I think, that we combined. And we might combine with another family next year, another friend of ours that lives in that same in that same area. So it was fun. Um, I did get burned. I, it's It's cleared up quite a bit. But you can see I got pretty burned on my chest and my... You can see my wonderful farmer's tan. Um, I had sunscreen on. I had sunscreen on my chest. I just, the sun doesn't like me. <laughs> so I've been kind of wearing loose loose clothing. It is a lot better now um, than it was a week ago for sure. Um, and I had my first week back to work. It was okay. It was fairly quiet except for the day I had like seven meetings. Um, but I'm working from home um, until... The week before classes start. So I'll be working from home the first three weeks in August, which is really nice. It's a nice way to kind of ease back into it after being off for a month. Um, and I think about my boss who has been off for, she was on sabbatical for a year and she also is kind of transitioning back. Um, so, you know, 
it's it's all good. We're just kind of taking it slow. Some of you gave great advice about just take it slow, just ease back into it, uh, which is exactly what I'm doing. And yeah, so it's been good. It's been good to get back into kind of the routine and um, it'll be good to, I mean, not that I want to go into the office, but I know it's healthy for me mentally to get out of the house and go into the office. So that will be coming up later then. So that was basically my week. Um, definitely I noticed sitting at a desk versus moving around, you know, cleaning, organizing, all that was a big as my body kind of came to a screeching halt and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you just sitting at a desk all day? So that part I didn't love. Um, it is easier at home to like stand up and move around or go for a walk or whatever than it is. Um, easy, um, it's easier to do that at home, of course, than at work. Um, but we did have some questions. So let's get into it. So we had some questions from last week's video. Lynn asked, how big is the summer montage piece? Those montages... They're pretty big. They're all more or less the same size. They might vary by three, four, five stitches. Um, she was talking specifically about summer montage. So I looked up summer montage is 340 stitches wide by 434 stitches high. And it, they are full coverage. So they are big. I am doing all mine on 32 count, uh, even weave, over two. And so when you take summer montage, you take that stitch count, put it over two on 32 count. Just the design size will be 21 inches and a quarter, 21 and a quarter inches wide by 27 and a quarter inch, inches high. Um, and that doesn't include the border and all that. So they are big pieces. Um, they are going to be definitely, these are going to be worked on a lot for a long time. So I hope you won't get tired of them. Kathy asked, and I usually do get one or two questions every time I mention this. Kathy asked, what is railroading? So I showed one down, three across by Long Dog Samplers last week. That's the the screenshot image that, um, the, or the thumbnail image that you see um, on last week's video. Um, and I talked about how I railroad when I'm doing a piece that's like all white stitching, I will railroad my stitches. And railroading is just when, um, so I use two strands and when I go back down, so I pull up my thread and when I go back down, I, I take the needle between the two threads. Like if this is my two threads, I take the needle between them. And some people believe like me <laughs> that it helps your stitches look a little bit nicer, especially when you're using something like a white floss, which shows every little thing. Um, have you ever put on like white pants or something and it shows every little thing <laughs> you know what I mean um white stitches kind of do the same thing like they just kind of show every little imperfection uh, you do not have to do it um I don't know I mean I do it I don't know how much of a difference it shows I did it on the piece lovebirds also um because that piece is also in all white so that's what railroading is some people do it both the bottom stitch and the top stitch I tend to just do the top stitch. Um, so you can do it either way if you want to do it. So that's what railroading is. It just means going between the two stitches. Yvonne asked, and I've had this question a couple of times, so I thought it was worth talking about. Yvonne asked, where do you get the larger pieces of fabric for like your haids and that type of thing? And Linda also had emailed me asking me, where do you get these large pieces of fabric? You can get them at places like one, two, three stitch, Check Heaven and Earth Designs. Heaven and Earth Designs do sell fabric, and they sell fabric to the size that you need. And if you need to special order a, a specific size, they will do that for you as well. Or you could call your local needle workshop, um, and they will be able, they may or may not have it in the store at the size you need, but they will be able to get it for you. Uh, so those are some places where you could get the larger pieces of fabric if you need it. And I'm sure several of you might have other suggestions as well. I've heard recently Mandy Parker, um, who has a floss tube, um, she was talking about, and, and Stitching by the Shore, they were talking about getting it from Amazon so that you can get large pieces of just Ada for full coverage from Amazon as well. So check out their floss tubes because they talked about it a little bit. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Um, Okay, let's get into it. So I said that before and we got into it and now we're going to get into it again. Uh, 
stats. We're in a new month. Can you believe it? Stats for July. So thanks largely to uh, Tour de France. Um, I got a total of 115 and a half hours of stitching time, which is great. Um, it is not the most I've ever had. I did more. I checked. I did more last July, uh, actually, surprisingly, somehow. Um, but it is a good amount. It is definitely more than what I normally do in a normal month. I started the month with 51 whips. I had two new starts, which were both the patriotic pieces, E Pluribus Unum and One Nation. And I finished one, which was the Hearthside Christmas by Erica Michaels, which you all saw a couple weeks ago. So I actually ended the month with 52 whips. So not too bad. Started with 51, ended with 52. So, I mean, kind of the wrong direction, but not terribly too bad in the wrong direction. Um, so what did I work on this week? So I worked on, so my new 25-7 piece, now that um, Tour de France is over, I have been working on, this is the uh, Woodland Christmas. It's by Tiny Modernist. It is a series. I am on the auto ship through Crazy Annie. So they send me a chart. It's a 12 part chart. They send me a chart every month. You can do them as individual ornaments or you can do them all in one piece. Of course, I'm doing them all in one piece. Um, and when you signed up for this, which was last November, I believe, um, you got like a bag and you have the option of getting the thread pack and or the fabric. I did get the thread pack. I did not get the fabric because I have fabric at home. Um, so I'm just doing this on a, I believe it's a 28 count dove gray. And this is where I got to. So we worked on the reindeer. So last week I showed you I had the border done and the reindeer, he's missing his hind legs. Um, but other than that, um, and there's some back stitching, which I'll do at the very, very end. And then of course there's some trees and snowflakes around him, but this is where I got to. It just working on about 25 minutes a day. So I love the variegation in the body. Um, that's uh, Weeks Dye Works Shinekli. I think it's a Weeks Dye Works. Um, that's what that is. So, so cute. And you make fast progress. And so this is, I'm going to work on this. Um, I assume, I'm hoping, I will get this one done this month and be able to continue working on number three. Because I do, I don't want this one to sit, you know. I had the first one done for a while and then I just kind of stopped. Um, I want to keep working on it uh, through this month. So that's where we are for Woodland Christmas. That's such a cute series. So many of them. I can show you really quickly the ones I have. So, well, this was number one, which is finished. And then, of course, number two, that's what it will look like. So you can see I have the trees and the snowflakes and to finish up um, the hind legs and do some a little bit of back stitching in there. But otherwise, and then um, this one is so cute. This one might be my favorite with the ornaments. I think that's so pretty. So, so pretty. That's part three. Part four is this adorable snowman. And the nice thing about this is you can just, you know, when they come out, I'm not sure when they will come out, but when they come out, you can just buy the ones you want and make them into one piece or ornaments as well. Number five is a sweet little angel. It's really, really cute. Lots of white stitching in that one with the wings and the snowflakes. Number six is this tree with presents. I think that's really pretty. Oh, talk about white stitching. Um, that was six. This is seven. This is the dove. It will be so pretty. There's so much white stitching. That one I might railroad. Uh, number eight is a Christmas squirrel. Very cute. He looks like he's in Shinekli too. Um, kind of similar to the reindeer. So this is why they, they all fit so nicely together because the borders are all the same and you know, they use the same threads in each one. And then part nine, we have this little fox. So cute. And then we have 10, 11, 12, which I guess I don't have yet. August, September, October, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, because we started in November. So 
the last three will be coming. So that's that. Um, it's so fun. It's, it's a nice, it's easy stitching. You know, it's good when you don't have to think of a lot. I, I enjoy not thinking. <laughs> I enjoy not thinking. So I finished up July working on One Nation by Bygone Stitches. We started this on the 4th of July. There's a bunch of people working on this. So this is what it will look like. You watch Gary, um, Gary and Ronnie's floss too. Oh my goodness. Gary got, I don't know. I think he's secretly an octopus. Um, he must have additional arms that he's hiding from us. Cause he has, he has, he has the whole field of stars done and he's working on the state names. This is where I got you. So I, I meant to work on this for two days at the end of July. I only got one because, because of the garage show. And being, I mean, I was in the actual garage. I wasn't out in the sun a whole lot, but I still got that burn and I was just completely wiped. I couldn't even, I worked on Woodland Christmas for like half an hour that night. And then I just went and laid in bed and stared at my phone. <laughs> so I did not get any stitching done on One Nation, but I worked on this one day and I got a lot more done. Oh, I was going to put in a picture because I forgot to show you last week, but I'll put in a picture and show you where I was last week. And then it's basically just this little corner. So I got a bunch of the outlines done once you figure out the pattern, it, it goes a lot faster. I don't know if that's what Gary did. I basically just worked where I could get to in my Q-snap. There is a little bit more, I think, for the Field of Stars, Field of Quakers. <laughs> I think there's maybe a couple more um, of these little Quakers that go out here. Maybe two more, and then we work our way down. But I was just working where I could reach in the Q-snap. And you can see I kind of got into my rhythm there. Um, and it goes down a little bit further as well. But so next time I pull this out, which will be next year, um, we'll have some good fill in to do. So that's where I got to on One Nation. And like I said, this one, this is on a 32 count uh, French blue. It's uh, fabrics by Stephanie fabric. And I'm just using the called for floss on that one. <laughs> Okay, so next up is Summer Montage, which is my seasonal piece that I'm working on. My This is what it will look like. This is um, artwork by Janet Stever. It is charted by Pain Free Crafts, and I am right here in the first. But look how cute this is. I love this little crab. I don't eat seafood, but I think he's really cute. I don't look at him and think I'm going to eat him. I look at him and think he's a cute crab. Look at this one. Look at all the browns in this. I mean, this is going to be something, right? As we watch it grow. So I work on this on Sundays for seasonal Sunday. So let me show you. And I just stitch these on 32 count Lugana. It's like a white or antique white because it's going to be full coverage. So here we are. Let me see if I can get that a little closer to you. There we go. So I pulled down. I got a lot of stitching done on this. I um, got 496 stitches done on this last Sunday. And I didn't really work on it any longer than I normally do. It's because this is, there's a lot of single colors in here. So I did some filling up here and then started bringing it down um, because I like to go down and then over. Um, so this is where we're at in July. So, because we're in a new month. So during the month of July, just working on this on Sundays, just a few hours each Sunday, I got 1,978 stitches in. Um, I started the month. I started July, which is the first month that this came out, um, at 0.80%. After last week, I am now at 2.14%. So even just working on it one day a week really does, you know, make some progress. And you can start to see the rows kind of coming through here. So that's exciting. So we're going to continue working on this. We have a couple more months to go on this. So that will be fun to see. I love seeing like the before and after. I think it's so fun to see 
oh, you know, where you were at the start and then how much progress you can get in, in a month. Okay. The main piece I worked on though this week was I pulled out Winter Quakers by Rosewood Manor. This is the last one of the series that I have to accomplish. This is on my year of whips. This is what it will look like. And so I am down over here. I finished up, it's hard to see, but I finished up this white motif. It was started, I just had to finish it. I did this one right here. There's a bunch, it's hard to see, but there's a bunch of little snowflakes around. So I did a bunch of those. And then I started in on this big giant one. Because once I finished this, I mean, we have these three and then some little cardinals and whatnot and a bunch of snowflakes, maybe that one too. But I mean, we're, we're, I think we have a chance <laughs> is what is, is my point. Um, I'm using the called for Valdani's and I'm stitching this on the called for. It's a 28 pound picture this plus in dwarf. And I'll show you the whole thing so far, and then we'll take a close up. So uh, one big difference that I am doing is the little snowflakes that you see scattered about, it calls to do those over with one thread because they're supposed to be in the background. I wanted them to show up more because they're a lot of work. So I'm doing mine in all three threads. Um, it does mean that some of the designs of the snowflakes are a little bulky with three threads. So I will like maybe change the design slightly so that it looks a little bit better. But otherwise I really like how, you know, it looks a little busy cause it is busy, but I, I feel like it looks like falling snowflakes. So let me show you what I actually worked on. Okay. So this is the motif we finished. We had it started. We did some of these little snowflakes. We did that motif there, some more little snowflakes around. And then you see these snowflakes here, and then we did a lot of work on this big motif here. So I just have the bottom corner to do, and then this, this star is repeated at each of the corners as well as this design. And then there's something in the middle. So, um, oh, I do have this one. This one I thought I needed to do. That one is done. Yay. <laughs> um, so we're getting there. I, I feel good about it. I, I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm naive, <laughs> but I feel like I can get this done by the end of the year. Um, this will come out. So I worked on this four days, four days this, this month, uh, the first four days of August. This will come out again. Um, usually I do about a four day rotation, but I haven't worked on it in a couple months, to be honest with you, just because I can't remember what my excuse was in June. July was Jolly July and Tour de France, so I did pull it out. Um, but this is going to come out at the end of this month, and I'm going to give it another four day rotation at the end of this month and see where we are. But I feel good because then we'll have September, October, November, four more months. I think I'll be able to get it done in four more months. Hopefully. Famous last words. So that's everything that I that I worked on um, this week. Um, so I have a little bit of haul. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Um, I got this in the mail. I could not figure out why I got something from um, Rogue Sitchi. Um, I was in their Fabric of the Month Club for about two years, which is great. I love their fabrics. I just... I don't know why I quit. N nothing against them at all. It's just like, okay, I have enough fabrics. So I'm going to pause on the fabrics for now. Um, well, so I got something in the mail from them. I'm like, what is this? Apparently, we never got the November, it's a little card, um, November fabric of the month, which I don't recall not getting it. Um, I'm not sure. They appreciate our patience. They gave us a code to show appreciation. I don't remember not getting our November, but apparently we didn't get our November. So this is the November. This is called Plum Pudding. It doesn't say, oh, it's Mountain Air. I get the 32 count Lugana. This will be so pretty for like a, it is, it's kind of like a purpley brown. It's perfect for a fall 
uh, like a fall harvest piece. I look at this and I think, I think November, maybe because it's the November fabric of the month, <laughs> but like a November piece, um, even a Halloween piece might look okay on this. So this was a fun surprise to get in the mail. Um, then I signed up for, um, cause you know, I spent a lot of July organizing my floss. I am working on my specialty floss. Um, I know I still owe you a video about how I store my, or organize my DMC. I, that's in my mind. I, I know. Um, but I think I'm going to do a similar way of organizing my specialty floss. Um, so I did sign up through Fat Quarter Shop for their Weeks Dye Works and their Classic Color Works um, Threads of the Month pack. Um, so I got my July one already. Like they sent them out right away. Um, this is Floss Frenzy is the Weeks Dye Works. Here, let me pull them out. Well, I can show you right here. So they do them in alphabetical order, which is great if you're trying to collect them all, which apparently I decided I am. So Bullfrog, Busy Lizzie, Butterbean, Buttercup, Cadet, and Camellia. So really, really pretty. I love add these to my inventory list, which I'll show you all um, what all that's about. Um, I'm not done organizing these and I'm actually waiting um, for an Etsy shop to put the specialty threads in her shop for the, the system I'm using. But anyway, um, the other thing that I have <laughs> to show you for, so I got that in the mail. So the big thing that I got for, um, uh, haw. I watch Nicola, 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 um, who is from, um, Hands Across the Sea. Um, she is one of the, the reproduction designers. If you're not watching her floss tubes, let me tell you, you will feel so posh when you watch them because of she's like, her accent is glorious. She is such a lovely human. Um, but be prepared to be enabled. You've been warned. She works a lot with, well, I don't know if she works with them, but Hobby House, which is in New York. And she showed these kits. Um, I got one. This is Winterbury is the brand. And they did have different sizes. I got the large one, so you can see compared to my head. Um, if that gives you any idea. Um, and it is supposedly designed for cross-stitchers. Um, so it looks like it's a sewing, you could use it as a sewing basket. I have a sewing basket that my grandparents gave me when I was, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, something like that, which I use and treasure because it's for my grandparents. So this, I thought you could double as a sewing kit. You could, if you're going on a retreat, like especially a local retreat, if you wanted to, you could take this. Let me show you the inside. They have different colors. I don't know if they're still available. I meant to check before I um, came on here and I just honestly forgot, but the zippers. Okay. So this beautiful blue. So I got a blue, they have a red and I think a caramel um, and they have different sizes and different price points. So again, this is the large one. Okay. Are you ready for the inside? You're not ready. Ready? Oh. <laughs> How gorgeous is that? It's like a purple velvet sit here and pet it sometimes. I'd say I'm joking, but I'm not joking. And you and I know both, both know that. So you have this little tray that you can lift out um, to put your little like scissors, needles, accoutrement. And then it's just like a big, a big container. So you could put your, um, you know, probably an eight by eight, in my voice that goes, eight by eight Q-snap could probably fit in there, especially if you dismantle it your your project your threads fold up your um chart your working copy of your chart all of that can fit in there um and then you can have like i said your scissors or your floss on here it is gorgeous it is not cheap this was definitely a splurge item um but it is um truly something that i will treasure for the rest of my life um, it is so well made. So if you go to Hobby House and type in Winterbury, it's, I know you might not be able to see that, but Winter, W-I-N-T-E-R, 
B-U-R-Y. Type in that and see what they have left if you are interested in, in that. I love it. It is so special to me. Um, I'm so glad I got, and I love the color. Um, you know that blue is my favorite color. So that is my haul. That's everything I got from my haul. Um, let's do giveaways. So for giveaways, um, I'm still waiting to hear from Sadie B on Hearthside Christmas. Sadie, I need your address. So if you could email me at seasupstitch at gmail.com so I could get this sent out to you. Um, if I don't hear from you by next week's video, which is in, next Saturday, I will um, pull somebody else from that video um, and, and, and pick a new winner so, winner. so I'll give you another week on that. So if you know Sadie B, um, please let them know that um, they won. Okay, so for this week, I went with the fall theme. And as I told you, I went through all my charts. Speaking of going through your charts, are you watching Gary's um, chart stash dive? Oh my goodness. I think it's three or four parts. The first part is over three hours long. Um, I'm halfway through part one and my list, I'm glad I did some like clearing out because my list is getting long of my, oh, I need to buy it. I did check today though. And one that was on my to buy list, I actually have. So that's good. Um, but anyway, so I did also, let me know if you want me to do it, like totally stealing Gary's idea. But if that is something that's interesting to you, like I just show you the charts I have in my stash, let me know if you'd be interested in that. Um, I am fascinated watching Gary's. It is so good and interesting and, um, really, really fun to see. And I just love the way that he talks about it and his ideas for it. And some he has like, Oh, I have this fabric for it. Or, you know, some he doesn't that type of thing, but I, I just love hearing his kind of thought process. So let me know. I do not have as many as Gary does. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, it would be a lot shorter than Gary's, but let me know if that's something you would like to see. Okay. So we're going to do some fall giveaways. Um, this one is by All Through the Night. It is Jolly Jack. It is a chart that was sent to me by my friend Andrea, who you have met a couple times on here. I, She finished it. She says it is one of her favorite pieces. I thought I was going to stitch it. I don't know that I'm going to stitch it anymore. So I'm going to give it to somebody who will stitch it. It is 73 stitches high by 71 stitches wide. Um, I forgot to mention, B18 so you can give me your address. And, um, this is open internationally, so I'll send it to you anywhere and don't say giveaway or anything like that. But if you want to be entered to win this, um, say Jack, J A C K, which ironically is the name of my black kitty cat. Okay. So that's Jolly Jack. This next one is one that I, I have to FFO it. <laughs> I have to FFO it. This is by the mindful needle, but I finished this last fall. Um, Falling Leaves by um, The Mindful Needle. This is one of the ones from um, Cottage Garden Threads, the autumn thread pack that you could buy. This is from, I believe it was last year's um, market, the August one, whatever the August one is. Um, so I finished this. So I'm going to give this away. Falling Leaves. Now, we're going to have to pay attention if you want to be entered to win this one, say autumn. I'll explain in a minute why it's autumn. Say autumn. Okay. It's really cute. It's really cute. Okay. The other one. So I picked these up off the freebie table um, at Stitching in the Wild, I believe. And I, after looking, taking stock of everything I have, I don't think I'm going to stitch it. So I'd like to pass it along to, to you. Fall samplings. This is by the Nutmeg Needle. They are darling. Um, it looks like you need a button and some stuff. It calls, yeah, it calls for a millhole button. I don't know if that button's still available, but you could put anything in there. Um, it calls for, it is 31 by 87 stitches. It does call for some pearl cotton because there is some cut work in here. If you want to give that a try and it does call for a flower thread, but, um, it doesn't give you, it doesn't give you a alternative, but you could 
just do whatever you want for that, I'm sure. Um, so fall samplings. So for this one, say fall. So we have autumn, fall, and jack. Okay. So that will be drawn. The winners for that will be drawn next week. Okay. Plans for this upcoming week. So we're going to continue with Woodland Christmas for 25-7. Um, summer montage will take place tomorrow. And then I'm going to give two or three days. I can't remember what I have written down. Two or three days. I'm going to pull out one from last year, which I love. This is the Mill Hill kit, buttons and beads. This is floral pumpkin. Sorry about the glare. Floral pumpkin. I think it is so pretty. I started this last year at um, the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit with my friend Robin. This is, I... I don't stitch on the perforated paper. I don't stitch on the perforated paper. Um, I just, I prefer fabric. Um, I think there's more that I can do with finishing because I don't know how I want to finish this. I think this would be a cute little pillow. Um, so I like to do it on the fabric. So this is just a 28 count dove gray that I have in my stash. Look, it's plenty, <laughs> plenty, plenty. Um, so this is where I'm at. This is on my year of whips to finish this year. So I'm going to give this a few days this month to work on and see how far we can get. I've already started on the beading. I don't know. I mean, if I hold it like that, you can kind of see some of the beading. But I'm kind of beading as I go because this whole thing fits in my Q-snap really well. So there you go. So we're going to give that a few days. And then you're not going to believe this. This coming week, what day is it? Friday, I think, is... International Cross Stitch Day. So I am pulling out a stitching show. This is um, Heaven and Earth Designs artwork by Amy Stewart. I am doing the max colors. We started this last year for World Cross Stitch Day. I have very little done way up here. <laughs> but I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to give it three days. And this is just 18 count Ada. I did this last week too. Oh, okay, it goes this direction. 18 count Ada. Um, just like a, it's like a oatmeal color. And that's where I'm at. Uh, so I'm going to work on this for three days. I don't know. I'll probably just do a bunch of fill in to try to like get this solid and then kind of work our way across. So that will be fun to pull out. I meant to pull this out in April and give it a few days in April as well, but that just didn't happen with my dad was here for two weeks in April and I just kind of ran out of time. Um, oh yes. Yeah, so I see in my notes, I did write down floral pumpkin. will get three days. A stitching stuff will get three days as well. So I think that's everything. I'm going to see the Barbie movie tomorrow. I, <laughs> a lot of people have been going to see it and I'm like, man, I wish I could go see it. And, uh, I wish it were streaming on something. It's not streaming anywhere. And <laughs> it was just last night. It dawned on me. I can go see it. Like I can go to the theater and see the movie. So I bought my ticket. Um, I'm just going by myself, which is no problem. There's a theater right where, um, in a Safeway, like basically like parking lot of the Safeway. Right. Um, and so I can go pick up my groceries after the movie. How perfect is that? Um, so yeah, so that's kind of great. I'm super excited to see it. And I haven't been to, I don't go to the movies. Like I don't, like I have a fear of commitment or something. I can watch Gary's stash die for three hours plus, but like I can't sit through like a two hour movie for some reason. Um, but I'm excited. I'm going at the noon showing because then I can eat popcorn and count that as my lunch. <laughs> um, so it'll be fun. I'm excited. Um, so let me know if you've seen it and what you thought about it. Anyway, that's all I have for you for this week. So I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you all next Saturday. Bye. Bye.